What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank and this is going to be the beginning of a presentation that's going to blow your freaking mind. This is going to blow your mind guys. It blew my mind when I found out about it because you know how a lot of you guys say that I'm pretty knowledgeable on certain things. It's because I'm always studying and always seeking new information and sometimes I run across something that that I didn't I didn't know right and that's so profound that I got to share with you. I really don't want to ruin it right but I'm going to set the basis for what it is that I'm talking about. This is going to blow your mind, all right? Now, you know how in my videos, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know how, uh, you know, I've talked about population and the issues with population. You know how I told you how Europe is having an existential population decline, right? Europeans, Europeans in America, Europeans in Australia, Europeans in their homeland of Europe are having an existential crisis. You know, in South Africa, they're having an existential crisis of losing power, even though a lot of them, the rich oligarchs, are still holding on. But the main populations are having issues. They're all having issues, right? Y'all have even heard me talk about Asia. They're also having an existential crisis in the population. Now, we think of China, and we think of those places. Oh, they got a billion people. They're growing. They have a billion people, but they are growing. Uh, they're Because of the policies that they have placed on themselves, the majority of those people are old, right? They're not replacing their population. They're not, they're, they, they, they're on an irreversible population decline, meaning it cannot be reversed through normal means, all right? That, that's Asia, which includes China, Japan, Europe, which includes all of Europe, especially Italy, right? And basically everybody is, is having a population issue because of the policies and because of genetics, it's just nature is just putting in work. The only group that's actually growing are African people. The people who are already massive as it is. If you notice, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, we populate, we have the biggest continent that belongs to us, the biggest land mass and arable land that belongs to us. We also reside in Brazil, or South America, Central America, um, in uh, Asia, and we're every, we are legitimately everywhere and we're ever growing. And we have so many people we can afford to overpopulate everybody else's homeland and still populate our or keep our population levels going up in our mainland right but every group that's having a uh having a population issue a birthing issue they're coming up with policies to try to improve that to try to change and reverse that right europeans are trying to pay their women to have babies right and in america they're trying to get rid of abortion so they can force the women to have babies that right that's why they took away the right to choose right they're trying to give condoms and and do uh, and, and to africans to stop them from having babies they tried to kill us with diseases, with bacteria, with viruses, but it never worked, right? Now, I come across a policy that Chinese, the Chinese are proposing, are thinking about, and slightly implementing, and, and it looks like they're gonna ramp it up to, to, to bolster their population. And when you, I'm just gonna let you see it. Now, this is from a reputable, um, this is a long, it's gonna be about a three minute, watch this. This one you share, listen. This one you share, this one you like, this one you make a comment. I don't never tell you to like, share, and comment. This one you do. You share this one. This one you share, okay? I'm going to put a clip out of their own mouths. These are them people saying it, not me. All right? I don't know if they're going to hit me with copyright. I don't know what they're going to do. But I absolutely must share this because I, I couldn't believe it myself. All right? But I want to hear what all you got to say. Listen, and here's the thing, guys. Listen, for this one, we need to pause the diaspora wars for a second, right? If you FBA, ADOs, if you xenophobic African, some tribe, whatever, if you think you're an Indian but you're black, if you Caribbean, if you Afro, it don't matter what camp you, you go in, all black people, all people of African descent need to pause the fight. Pause, we press and pause, and we all need to pay attention to this, and all of you guys need to start talking about this particular topic on your, in, in, on your videos. You guys need to start looking into this topic and talking about it. This needs to be a discussion, because this is absolutely wild. And I couldn't believe that I ran across this. We all should be aware of this. This is something all of us should be aware of, talking about and know in our heads that is happening. Being aware of what's happening worldwide when it comes to black people, all right? Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. The reluctance of Chinese people to date, marry, or have children is largely due to the economic pressures such as costly health care, parental support, job scarcity, and the ability to sustain oneself. Ultimately, these societal challenges stem from the economic conditions shaped by the CCP. 
In May 2023, the China Family Planning Association launched pilot projects in more than 20 cities to provide subsidies for housing, taxation, and education for families with two or more children. But the government's efforts have been widely mocked on social media, with hardly any young people believing that these projects will help them. When these measures fail, the CCP resorts to other means. As early as 2009, a researcher at the state-owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission Luo Tianhao drew great attention and discussion among the Chinese people with his article, China needs to introduce 100 million African immigrants within 10 years to solve China's aging problem. What? People thought this was just a pipe dream. The government did not just stop at the propaganda level, but had taken real actions many years ago. At the 2015 Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in Johannesburg, Xi Jinping promised to provide 50,000 government scholarships and 50,000 training opportunities for Africa. China's universities have eagerly recruited African students with extremely generous benefits. In his official speech, the leader of the study abroad center of the Ministry of Education, Liu Qinghui, admitted to the significant increase in enrollment and preferential treatment for the students from Belt and Road countries. During the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China in 2019, Minister of Education Chen Baosheng stated that by 2049, China would become the most desirable destination for studying abroad. Many foreign students have also been retained by Chinese state-owned enterprises and public institutions. Many high-end talent recruitment fairs for foreign students held in various places were intended to pave the way for these outsiders to stay in China. Compared with many impoverished countries in Africa, the livability of many cities in China undoubtedly attracts many Africans. Therefore, more and more African people are happily coming to China and not wanting to leave. For example, in Guangzhou, the peak number of Africans once reached as high as 500,000, and then later they surged to Yiwu in Zhejiang. The advanced wholesale market for small commodities enables them to buy products and sell in their own countries, capitalizing on significant price disparities to earn substantial profits. In recent years, the number of African people in China has continued to grow, and many of them have settled in China and made a living. Mixed-race children are also gradually becoming more common. Experts predict that the number of African people in China will peak at 100 million by 2050. China's marriage crisis and population decline are going to be solved by African immigration. China's real estate crisis is solved by returning to planned economic welfare and distributing houses. Xi Jinping's imagination is beyond the grasp of ordinary people. But the whole world can predict that China, under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party, is heading towards an irreversible abyss. Well, in China, parts of the southern city of Guangzhou have become a melting pot of Chinese and African cultures. The number of marriages between African immigrants and local Chinese is on a steady rise. CCTV's Audrey Seek has our story. Meet Kingsley Azie, a businessman from Cameroon. In 2007, he started work as a trader in Guangzhou. From building materials to clothing, Kingsley is supplying Africa with what it needs. He has become a leader in Guangzhou's African business community. And it's here he put down roots. He met his future wife in northwestern Shanxi province where they married. Kingsley says the beginning wasn't easy. And secondly, the language barrier to be able to communicate with the family fluently. It was a little bit difficult. And then the Chinese food, it was very, very difficult for me to accept. At the very beginning, my family and friends rejected our marriage. Cultural differences and the distance between China and Africa were daunting. But their love bridged the gap. Kingsley adjusted to Chinese culture and won over his wife's family and friends. Now they have two children. Wang Shuang sometimes finds herself having to explain to her children why they stand out from the crowd. 
Sometimes someone will ask my son why he's so black. I want him to be proud. I tell him you're the color of chocolate, while some other children are the color of milk. Despite overcoming these obstacles, visas, access to social welfare, and education for their children remain big concerns. The Guangzhou government has set up over 70 service centers in areas with a large foreign population. And social workers are trying to help with the difficulties. We think there are about 200 African Chinese children on this street. Our center provides information and consultation services. We also provide language lessons, advice on how to deal with legal and medical issues, and help with the cultural adjustment. Many Africans in Guangzhou have to renew their visa every few months. Kingsley is now applying for his Chinese green card, but he doesn't know whether he'll get it. And that is his biggest wish. Generally, China has an open visa policy. Anyone who is eligible can apply for permanent residency. Our policy is not country-specific, but based on economic criteria. Around 20,000 Africans live in Guangzhou, thought to be one of the largest groups of foreigners in the city. The belief that love conquers all is alive and well for many there. Social workers like Xing Han expect the Guangzhou authorities and local community to do more to welcome people who want to call China home. Audrey Seek, CCTV, Washington. Hello, Chinese. Okay. Bye bye. You remember how to eat? Don't let them eat other Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up guys? How are you doing? So today I just camped from Beijing and I'm going to see my girlfriend. I know you guys have been waiting for this video. Like, where is your girlfriend? So now look at her here. She's there dancing and waiting for me. Yeah. So guys, that's been a long time. Actually, a lot of black people you'll talk to say they prefer the racism in China over back in the States. They perceive it to be differently because here they see it more as ignorance, whereas in the States it's more like hate, like people actually hate you and like want to kill you or threaten you violently. But in China it's more like, it's just different, it, it doesn't seem like they hate you. Especially when I speak Chinese, I can go almost anywhere and talk to people, at least in the places I've been so far, and people will kind of accept me, I guess. I don't know how else to explain that, but they won't be like, oh, get out of my store. They won't follow me around in the store and see if I'm trying to steal something. They won't, like, I don't know, be rude to me. Now, that's not the case for all black people. Again, I'm the Obama black, I guess, that Chinese people are more comfortable with. So when you have kind of darker skinned black people, their experiences are much, much different than mine. They say China is trying to colonize Africa in a, under disguise of economic cooperation. So what do you see as real neocolonialism? Well, that kind of, of explanation is it's difficult to understand. Well, first of all, China has not dropped bombs on any territories anywhere in the world. Huh? in the effort to steal the resources of those territories. China has not done that. China's attitude has been genuine friendship with the African people and indeed with all the peoples all over the world. In our most difficult periods, we counted on China. We stood shoulder to shoulder with China in combating racism even in its worst form of apartheid. Yeah. The National Liberation Movement in Africa enjoyed considerable support from China and so on. So China is a friend. China is a brother. And China's understanding of Africa is not based on a hierarchical structure of masters and servants. It's based on a structure of mutual friendship and the development of the entire world for the prosperity of all the peoples of the world. Afro think tank, what are we going to do today? Try to take over the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs>